Hey there, here's the next video in the series Working with Reference. What we're going to do is I'm going to actually rotoscope the ball animation now. Uh, we'll do this in a couple of different stages because I'm going to be working with Maya and in After Effects. But let's go ahead and get going on this. So, first thing I'm going to do is import the ball into my scene. So, File, and we'll go Import, and we'll go and grab the ball rig. So... There it is. Now, what I need to do is I need to scale the ball down to match the uh, the ball in my scene. So, and I'm also going to do two different ball types. So, let's look at that for a second. I'll grab the main control or the root control here. And first of all, what we can do is global scale this. So, we'll just, you know, kind of drag it down, play around with it a little bit. Um, we can also just move it into position, if you like, just to, to scale it uh, to the size that you want. Um, if I try 0.55, that looks like it's going to get me pretty close. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to move the ball back to the origin uh, where it came in. And then I'm going to get rid of a couple of the other controllers. So we'll select these and these. And I'm going to add them to a new layer and call that extra controls. And uh, I'm going to make them not visible and color code them as being, you know, I, I like to do that because I know which ones are mine then if the rig already comes with other layers, but I may as well show you how to do it anyway. And then we're ready to get going. So now what we're going to do is just basically go straight ahead on this animation. Um, so I'll set my frame range. It's going to be 1 to 72. There we are. And uh, let's get going here. So frame 1 will move the ball into position. Now, what I'm going to do is every time the ball moves, I'm going to set keys. So we'll start here, and then as soon as I notice that the drawing moves, uh, I'm going to actually move my ball um, to match. And it starts slowly, and then it begins to pick up speed. So we'll just go ahead and do that really quick. And at this point, I can actually probably go to twos on it. So I'm going to try that. There we are. And I'm so I'm going to take this position here um, as being my contact position. But let's also see what we have here either side. So between here and here, there is a drawing. So I am actually going to um, take these as well. So I'll do 10 and I'll do 11 as well. Um, it's a really quick move there. So I am going to... Um, you know, nail that down that way. Let's see what else we have here. So the ball kind of hits its peak at 15. So um, at frame 11, let's insert one at 13. And then at frame 15. So you can see here, you know, what I've got so far. All right. And then well, it's still going up there a bit at 16, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll bring it down. And again, I like to do two or three frames on either side of the extremes, although that doesn't work when you get into really tiny bounces. But, um, you know, let's, let's go with that anyway. So I'm going to go to twos again here. So that looks like it's an extreme. It's touching the ground. So let's do one either side as well. just to really nail that speed down in there. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically animating this straight ahead. Um, we're getting to the point now where I'm gonna be doing basically ones because the bounce is getting smaller and faster. So um, we'll just do that right off the bat here. You can see it really takes no time to actually animate it this way. And I'll be able to clean the curves later if I want. Um, but you'll see that this will give me a pretty good result. I'll be, you know, pretty much all the way there on it. Down to the ground. And 
we'll wrap this up here by just putting the final frames in. So again, to review, what we did is we shot a reference. We created a Roto a 2D animation, um, which is what you're seeing in the background here. And then we go ahead and just animate it straight ahead in Maya using the footage that we have. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to get us 90% of the way there. Oops, settle down there a little, Terry. And uh, I think we're pretty much at the end here. It's in very fine detail here. Oh, still. So we'll do that. And that. And you can see that now that this ball pretty much matches exactly. So there we are. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file quickly. And uh, so we'll go file, save scene as. And I'm going to call this um, the left ball. <laughs> um, or the, uh, yeah, we'll just call it that, the left ball. It's not very complex, but anyway, you'll get the idea. Um, and um, I'll save it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly play blast this. So right mouse click, play blast options. Uh, first thing I want to do is make sure that my render um, settings are set up properly. So I'm going to go to my presets here on image size and set the preset to HD 1080 and then close this. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is I'll save this as an image sequence, turn show ornaments off. I'm going to save it as a JPEG sequence and you'll see why in a few minutes. I'll choose from render settings. Scale is fine. Um, I only need two digits on my frame padding and I'm going to click save to file. Um, we'll call this the left ball bounce and I'll hit browse and I just want to make sure that it's going to render to the correct place and you can see that yes it will in fact do that. It's going to my project, it's going to the images folder. So that's great. Um, so what I'm going to do is a couple of things here. Just make sure that I deselect and turn off my NURBS curves. Um, and then we can go ahead and, uh, and render that. I'll also turn off the reference camera for the time being. And then I can go ahead and hit play blast. So we'll just let that run. And it's done.